Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Have you ever heard the phrase XRP, all the money? Well, sure you have. If you're in the XRP community, you've been here for a while at least, you've, you've heard that before. People have been saying that for years and years and years, especially on Twitter. You see it pretty darn frequently, but what does it mean? Well, all sorts of people have all sorts of different ideas I've come to find. Some people think that it just means uh, XRP, all the money, just that XRP will bridge all the money around the planet, which is a reasonable concept. But then you can get on the other end of the spectrum where things start to seem a little bit silly. Some people actually have the idea that it means XRP will effectively be worth all of the money that is on the planet today. Whatever that is in terms of United States dollars today, XRP just replaces that all. And there are shades of gray in between. It's the full spectrum from one end to the other. Some of it's a little bit out there for me. And in this video, I'm going to be critiquing some of these ideas and some specifics from people that have uh, s spoken in um, other videos. My fellow, my fellow XRP YouTubers, um, they uh, quotes from a specific individual I'm going to cover. And it includes ideas that I just do not subscribe to, including XRP being backed by gold. I think it's a silly idea. I think it's completely ridiculous, and I'm going to articulate why. Uh, but some people just think that um, basically XRP is just going to do everything. I just I think XRP is fantastic. I think it, that it's, it solves real problems for real people. I think there's an opportunity for it to potentially be worth substantially more in the future than it is today. But I also recognize nothing's guaranteed. But uh, I just I think some people go a little bit too far. I, I just and so I just want to share my perspective here. And since I am going to be critiquing ideas from other members of the XRP community in this video. Um, I want to be very crystal clear from the outset. This is not me attacking anybody. Uh, this is me challenging people's ideas. Uh, but I, um, to me, this is fun. Like this is one of the most fun things you can do being in the XRP community. Maybe I'm just nerding it up or something, but I love to just go through these uh, critical thinking exercises, just mentally jousting. Like that's fun. As long as people are, are friendly, um, I tell you what, I don't mind my ideas being challenged as long as people are, are not being rude and they just want to get to whatever the truth is, because that's all I want. I just want to get to whatever the truth is. So um, this is not me, to be clear, because I, I know how people are. And that's why I've always prefaced And in any video where I critique people's ideas, I'm very careful about this. I don't want anyone to think that this is some sort of attack. It absolutely, I swear in my life, absolutely is not. I just want to talk about this stuff. And we should be able to do that as adults here. And uh, And again, if anybody wants to tell me I'm wrong, that's fine. Come at me you know, tactfully, and I, I would love to hear it. In fact, again, I think that's fun, and maybe I'll have a response for you. So you know, it's, it, I, I just think that's how it should be. But uh, again, I, given that, again, I'm going to be critiquing pretty hard here, I just wanted to make sure that there's no confusion about what my in intent is. Uh, but before going any further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about uh, crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Now, where did this come from? Well, here's an article from Seeking Alpha titled, Ripple, Buy the SEC Uncertainty, Sell the Settlement News, and shout out to Brian Monarch for sending this article my way. Now, I... <laughs> I am going to cover this article. I read the thing and I found it very interesting. Uh, there, it's not all bad. There are some inaccuracies, but there's some, it's just really interesting content and I wanted to cover that. But there's just one part of this article that I got down to and uh, they were critiquing the XRP all the money thing. And I was like, yeah, what is that? And then the more I looked into it, the more I was like, okay, this has to be its own, like this one single topic Ended up, I, I ended up coming to the conclusion it has to be its own topic. So, uh, Brian, if you're listening, I'm still going to cover this article, but it's going to have to be at some point uh, in, the, in the future here. XRP, all the money. And, and so they, uh, they wrote the file, and I will read this sentence. Uh, they wrote, many claims are amazingly outlandish. XRP, all the money, makes the assumption that the token will become the standard for all finance in the future. But is there any supporting evidence for this? And I, I have to agree here, and I, I promise I'm being respectful when I say this, I do think it's outlandish. And I, I really, the, the idea that it's XRP is the future of all things finance, and it, it, it's, it's, it's absurd. It is. And again, I, I, you know, I'm sorry if I'm going to say this too many times. I'm not trying to be offensive. I just, I want to be precise with my words. That is what I believe. I think the idea is, the, the idea is a bad idea. That's what I think. And I don't care who you are. That's why it's, it's not about the person. Whoever you are that believe this, 
It's not about you. It's about the idea. The idea is not good. Like the, all the ideas that I'm about to cover, I just, I just think they're not good. And so here's what they link to. And again, nothing personal. To, if you're watching this from E, uh, e Greg Crypto, uh, this is what they linked to actually was this tweet. And there's this uh, graphic here that says XRP, all the money here. I'll make it full screen. Total market value, $867 trillion. And it shows debt markets, securitized products, financial derivatives, uh, equity markets, securities financing, asset management, fund administration. But what does this mean? Like, what does this mean to X? Does this mean XRP as a market cap of $867 trillion? I, I wasn't quite clear. And so I even put out a tweet where I was just asking for feedback and a number of people did respond. But ultimately, you know what it led to? And this is what the rest of the video is going to be covering here. There's an individual here named Dave Diamond. Shout out to you, Dave. Thank you very much. Uh, he, he, um, he responded to me and wrote, Matt, I think this is the interview. And indeed, this is an interview which is highly relevant to XRP All the Money. And what is it? Um, it's an interview from my fellow XRP YouTuber, uh, Brad Kimes, who runs the a uh, very popular YouTube channel, channel uh, Digital Perspectives, which is what's on your screen right now. So that's Brad Kimes in the top right. And then you've got Jimmy Valley, who is uh, at Vail, if I'm saying it, Vail Hill Capital. I think I'm saying that correctly. He's, he's the guy at the bottom here. And I, I had seen him before. Um, he's the guy that's well known in the XRP community for a little over a year ago, sharing this idea that XRP is going to hit $35,000. Um, he was interviewed or had a discussion, however you want to characterize that, with my fellow XRP YouTuber, James Rule XRP. And this is, uh, this is what's on your screen now. That's James Rule XRP on the left with Jimmy, Val uh, Jimmy Valley on the right. And this was uh, February 10th, 2021, so over a year ago. And I remember watching this video and listening to what Jimmy had to say and thinking that, and again, I don't mean this in any way, but I, I thought it was pretty silly. I, I, I really did. I please, nobody hate me for this. I just, I do, I, I'm not trying to offend here. And yeah, like, I, I'm a fan of James Rule XRP, nothing against Jimmy on a personal level either, but I thought what he was saying was kind of silly. And I'm going to explain why. I'm going to articulate all of this. I'm really going to flesh this out. I'm going to go into great detail here. Um, I actually transcribed a lot of this video and also uh, Brad Kimes video. Now there was also this um, and let's let's cover this one first. Uh, somebody named Antimony responded to me and said, ask Evan Schwartz, he might know, in, in terms of XRP, all the money, what does that mean? And so there's this video clip, and thank you very much, Antimony, for sharing this with me. And there's this video clip where Evan Schwartz, who's a former Ripple employee, uh, he was, uh, one of his quotes from this video that's linked to is, what is Interledger's total addressable market size? All the money. That was his answer. All the money. Um, and Interledger was created by uh, by Ripple employees. And so Evan is actually correct. You know, because again, the, he said, what is Interledger's total addressable market size? All the money. Evan is correct on this. But let me ask you this. What is McDonald's total addressable market? 7.8 billion humans and ideally three meals a day per human, right? That would be the ideal situation for a McDonald's. Sell them burgers and the Flappy Jacks and the McNuggets, all that crap. But, but, but just because that's the addressable market size, it doesn't mean that McDonald's, with all its broken-ass ice cream machines, will successfully sell its burgers and McNuggets to every human on the planet. In fact, it's a virtual certainty that it won't. And so additionally, Interledger Protocol is not a protocol that only works with XRP. A lot of people think that that's what it was designed for. I mean, it was designed in... in, in I'm sure it was a thought along the way, of course, that it would benefit XRP because you're connecting all sorts of aspects of finance. That, that is true. But, but Interledger Protocol, it's not a protocol that only works with XRP or only works with cryptocurrencies. It actually works with ledgers of all kinds, including traditional ledgers from the legacy financial system. Now, as such, to anyone that saw this video and thought it meant that, uh, you know, the, the end game for XRP is all the money, you're mistaken. It's just a protocol that allows for interoperability amongst various ledgers. It is not something that will make all other ledgers obsolete. Uh, now, let's go ahead and uh, talk about what happened in this video. So here's a video from uh, with James Rule XRP, my fellow XRP YouTuber, when he spoke with Jimmy Valley. 
And and here's a quote. I, I transcribed a fair bit of this, and I'm, I'm really going to break this down here because, again, he's talking about, he, he, he's positing ideas such as XRP going to $35,000 and XRP being backed by gold. These are things that he's talking about that he thinks make sense. It doesn't make sense. Um, so here's a quote from him. We believe if XRP is to reach its full potential, it will be predominantly used by the central banks, end quote. Well, there are over 11,000 financial institutions throughout the world, uh, which includes banks, credit unions, remittance firms, etc. Uh, the foreign exchange market, mind you, is it's estimated to be $6.6 trillion daily. You know, th that's the most recent figure I could find, which was on uh, an Investopedia website. I don't know if I have it pulled up here so I can show you. It doesn't matter, whatever. It's it's $6.6 .6 trillion daily. That was as of uh, the later part of 2021, all right? Now, the vast majority of those flows are through non-governmental financial institutions. Non-governmental financial institutions. So, to believe that in order for XRP to reach its full potential, it must only be used in a small percentage of global foreign exchange transactions via central banks, it just, it just makes, makes no sense. You know, you think if the, uh, the 11,000 plus financial institutions around the world don't predominantly use XRP, that XRP has reached its full potential? Well, I strongly disagree. And, and this is the idea that he was positing here, that, that if XRP is going to reach its full potential, it will predominantly be used by central banks. I just I disagree. I think the vast majority of flows are going to come from other financial institutions with a small percentage of flows coming from central banks. I think it's exactly the opposite. I, mean, I don't know how you could view it any differently, to be perfectly honest with you. So I strongly disagree on that point. And, and also, what about other use cases? If we're talking about XRP being, um, you know, reaching its full potential, what about other use cases? In order for XRP to reach its full potential, might additional use cases play a substantial role as well? Well, I think so, and I sure as hell hope so. And here's another quote from Jimmy. Think about a world in which the central banks all decide to adopt and agree to a price that covers all the money. There's that term again, all the money, uh, right? And what the price of XRP would need to be to cover all the money. You're talking about something between probably $10,000 and maybe even as high as the price of gold, the current implied price of gold, which is $35,000, end quote. So there you go. He's talking about <laughs> a world in which XRP is between $10,000 and $35,000, and it's because of central banks. And so ask yourself, why would central banks the world over want to choose a price for XRP? And could they even make that happen? You know, think about the implications of this. XRP currently has an open market price that humans, speculators like you and me, decide. We decide what price we're willing to pay for XRP. And we decide what price we're willing to sell our XRP for. If central banks decide what the global price for XRP is, you're no longer able to make those decisions. And the reason why is obvious. Let's say that collectively, central banks the world over decide that each XRP is worth $100. I'm just making up a number. Let's say that central banks decide XRP is worth $100 and they can actually enforce that legally. Well, the open market price at the time I'm recording this is about 83 cents. The price of XRP cannot simultaneously be $100 and also be worth 83 cents. So, which price is the real price? $100 or 83 cents? Because again, the government said it's $100, but the open market price today, 83 cents. So if they decree it's worth $100, which is it really? You know, free and open markets decide what the global price is for, uh, is for XRP. Now, now, people, of course, can buy and sell above and below the average global price, but there is still an average global price regardless. And so this means that people would have to be prohibited from, like legally prohibited from speculating on the price of XRP. Since in this hypothetical, all of the central banks on the planet just decided what the price is, because that's what Jimmy said. The, the central banks decided what XRP is worth in this hypothetical. And so that means XRP would have to be delisted from every exchange on the planet. Either that or there would have to be laws in place in every jurisdiction on the entire planet to prohibit buyers and sellers on exchanges 
from buying and selling it for any price outside of what the central banks approved. Now, th that means that XRP will have been uh, forcibly turned into a stable coin by governments around the world. <laughs> now, now, of course, you know, if, if, if you're an XRP holder and you bought it any time since the beginning of its existence, you'd love the price of XRP to jump up to $10,000. Why would central banks the world over want to make us richer while simultaneously making themselves poorer? Because they're backing it, right? Th think about it. If the price is guaranteed by central banks, they have to take our XRP and give us dollars, right? They're the ones guaranteeing the price after all. Now, why would they do that? Or are the, uh, are the purchasers of our XRP supposed to be on exchanges and, and the exchanges uh, force a set price of $10,000 per XRP? Well, in that case, good luck finding your exit liquidity. You know, buyers would dry up uh, as, as every current XRP holder on the planet will rush to sell it all. And don't forget, if there is a required price of $10,000 because the government says so, you can't sell your XRP for $9,999 or $5,000 to entice people to buy it or, or $1,000 in an attempt to, to entice people to buy it or even 83 cents, which is the price today. You don't get to choose that anymore. And folks, this isn't going to happen. <laughs> and I think the whole concept is rather silly. Very silly. Now, Jimmy acknowledges that if central banks did force a set price of XRP of at least $10,000, that Ripple would be worth more than most medium-sized countries. They'd have the power to move global markets in bankrupt countries, Jimmy pointed out. Uh, let's pretend that all of the points that I already cited a moment ago, including liquidity issues, didn't exist. Let's just pretend that all the problems I pointed out didn't exist. Well, not only does it make zero sense for central banks the world over to make Ripple the richest company on the planet and effectively give them free purchasing power for all of the world's goods and services, Ripple would also represent a threat to sovereign nations the world over if they had such power. It's unheard of and will not happen. In this video, Jimmy Valley actually did acknowledge that this probably isn't acceptable um, if your quote sitting back and being real honest as a regulator, end quote. But he still thinks there is a path forward that may make sense. And he said the following, and this is, a, this is another quote from Jimmy. Is there some world that you're kind of getting both? You're getting the initial distribution of XRP. It's treated like a security to kind of keep it done in a certain way or limit the trading of it between, the central, between central banks, governments, Commercial banks, maybe highly accredited investors. I can see something kind of working out like that. End quote. That's what Jimmy had to say. Well, I have questions. A lot of questions. What, what does it mean to treat the initial distribution of XRP like a security? Look, registered securities can only be traded in the United States by accredited investors if they're a security or a private company. If they're security of a private company. You know, that means you would need to earn at least $250,000 a year and or have a net worth of at least $1 million in order to buy or sell XRP because that's what it takes to be an accredited investor. And that's what he's talking about. Now, so again, that, that's what it takes to be a, <laughs> approved as an accredited investor by the, the government in the United States. But if XRP is at a price that has been set by a bunch of central banks, then if you buy it, then you can only sell it for what you paid for it. Because that's what the government decreed. That makes no sense at all. Re remember, the government set the price for XRP, so who would bother to buy XRP under such circumstances? If you're limiting the trading of it between central banks, government, commercial banks, and highly accredited investors, as Jimmy suggested, what does that do? A among the other terrible consequences that I've already cited, it would obliterate liquidity in the typical retail speculator if the a typical retail speculator could no longer buy and sell it. If, if, if you, even if secondary sales would not be considered security transactions under this hypothetical scenario, who the hell is going to buy XRP when the price doesn't fluctuate? 
I'd rather buy Dogecoin or Shiba Inu at that point. Hell, give me some Ethereum Classic, which is verifiably the worst cryptocurrency on the entire planet. Hell, give me a low cap piece of crap coin that might be a scam at that point. At least with any of those, I might have a chance at least to increase my net worth. And, and now again, Jimmy already stated that he doesn't think the powers that be will allow Ripple to become so rich. And as a result of that belief, he stated the following. And here's another quote from Jimmy. The trick to me at this point is going to be how to get Ripple to agree with the government that they won't be in control of the escrow. I think that's probably what the backroom discussions are really about. If they can come up with a way where there's an agreed upon distribution process that is subject to government oversight like a security would be, like the registration of a security would be, and that the, the volume of that distribution happens in a certain way, that we could see a deal struck where initial distribution is a security for those purposes, but for the purposes of how you and I deal in crypto, it's a currency. Okay, well, here's an idea. How about the central banks just create their own damn stablecoin at this point, since that's what XRP would become under what you're proposing? It makes no sense for central banks to select XRP and then have to negotiate with Ripple regarding their escrow and also destroy free and open markets that want to speculate on XRP in the process. You know, there are over 18,000 cryptocurrencies in existence, and XRP isn't the only one that's fast. What about XLM, for example? It's a clone of XRP that's slightly modified, quite literally. And I'm not kidding, Jed McCaleb, one of the creators of XRP, he took the code of XRP and copied it and then launched XLM after modifying it slightly. It's, it's almost the same damn thing. And so why would the central banks, and that XLM is Stellar Lumens, by the way, why would the central banks select XRP over Stellar Lumens, XLM? Why, why XRP over XLM? If, if anything, selecting XLM would make more sense because Stellar Development Foundation holds a smaller percentage of the total supply of XLM that Ripple holds of XRP. So out of over 18,000 cryptocurrencies, this is magically the one. This doesn't make sense to me, folks. It, I'm just being honest with you. And again, this is, I guess, a time, time to pause and say again, nothing against Jimmy. It's just these, these ideas have been propagated all over our entire community. And I just, I, I, I really want to say my piece. I think it's reasonable. I think it's reasonable. I promise I'm not being rude. I, I don't dislike Jimmy at all. He seems like a nice guy on camera anyway. I've seen a couple videos of him now. He seems like a perfectly nice guy. I, I just, I, I disagree with what he believes on this topic. I do not think that it makes sense. And he seems like a smart guy. I'm not like questioning his intelligence or anything. I'm just saying in my humble opinion, his ideas are bad. And maybe he'd say that my ideas are bad and that's perfectly fine. As long as we're being adults about it, I don't mind that one bit here. But, uh, and here's a separate thought. How would XRP ledger validators respond to this hostile takeover of XRP? Why would they participate any longer when the onerous government regulations would be tantamount to turning XRP into a centralized coin? Hmm? Good question, right? Now, Jimmy also said the following, and I quote, The wild card to me is that there is actually a deal to be done among the central banks and governments to basically have XRP work as the world's bridge currency, a neutral asset that can be traded between the central banks to move a specific type of fiat to another type of fiat. If that's what occurs, it's back to what we were discussing earlier. It's got to cover kind of all the money. There's that phrase again, all the money. And I think you're looking at a range that XRP would settle on agreements. This would happen instantaneously somewhere between $10,000 and $35,000 per coin, end quote. So there you go. Uh, Jimmy's proposing that under this, if you get the central banks to all agree on it, instantaneously, XRP goes from being worth whatever it is at the time, and today it's 83 cents. It goes from whatever that is to $10,000 to $35,000 per coin. Uh, no. Um, if XRP is being positioned as a bridge currency, it does not need to be equivalent to the value of all money that's on the planet. But that's what Jimmy is suggesting, that XRP would be worth maybe upwards of $35,000 per coin because it needs to be worth all the money on the planet. But XRP does not need to be worth that much to function successfully as a bridge currency. 
It just needs to have a sufficient blend of price and liquidity, with liquidity being more important than price, of course. But again, Jimmy said XRP has, quote, got to cover kinda all the money, end quote, and then stated this means XRP must be worth between $10,000 to $35,000. This simply isn't true. XRP is so amazingly fast that a substantially lower price would be sufficient to cover global foreign exchange transactions so long as there is sufficient liquidity, meaning there needs to be a lot of people buying and selling XRP because it settles in three to five seconds. You don't need it to be that high of a price, not $35,000. Load no. Now, in, in fact, the, the way Jimmy is looking at this is exactly backwards. And I, I've been making this argument since early 2018. It, it's not the case that XRP will be so and so priced because it needs to be in order to handle all foreign exchange transactions on the planet. Rather, it's that if XRP has a high enough price and has enough liquidity, then it can be used as a bridge currency in more corridors and for more transactions. So it's precisely backwards. Um, now, uh, let's jump to Brad Kimes' video. I'll say it yet again, this is not an attack on anybody. <laughs> I just, I, I think it's fun to talk about. Like, I, I have fun talking about this stuff. I hope it comes across that way. Like, I'm having fun talking about this stuff and thinking through this. And if anybody, any of them wants to critique me, please have at it. I, I love to have back and forth. As long as we're all adults, I, I say, let's go. Like, that. that's how it should be. And, and I could be wrong. Like, I'm willing to understand. I'm willing to be persuaded. If if you bring up points, or hell, may, maybe I misunderstood something you said. I did my best to understand you. I'm operating in good faith. But hell, maybe I misunderstood something, in which case some clarification would make me think, oh, yeah, okay, you got a good point. Well, yeah, maybe that's the case, too. I'm open to having communication on all this stuff. That's perfectly fine. It, I, I encourage it. But um, so, so here's Brad Kimes' video, and this is titled uh, Ripple slash XRP. XRP, what is fair market value price? Uh, $18,739 to $38,399 per XRP. Now, they did go into um, XRP price calculator, which I thought about throwing into this video, but I'm going to do it in a separate video immediately following this one, because otherwise this video is going to go way, way, way too long. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, there were, there were price estimates for XRP plugged into an XRP price calculator of $38,000, and I take issue with that stuff too, and I'm going to explain why in a separate video. But I, I did want to talk about this because... Uh, there was one quote in particular, and we're going to get into the idea of uh, XRP being backed by gold here, which I just think is a very outlandish idea. It's not going to happen, folks. Never, 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 not in a million years. But uh, but Jimmy, uh, anyways, he's got another idea here. Uh, rather than central banks saying XRP must be a specific price, it would simply be pegged to the price of gold. Now, this is an equally silly concept. And here's a quote from Jimmy on this in, in Brad Kimes' video from the Digital Perspectives YouTube channel. The peg to gold approach, which is that there is going to be a global reset to gold where fiat currencies will be re-collateralized by gold and there will have to be an agreement on what the price per ounce for gold is and then XRP will end up representing one ounce of gold. End quote. Okay, well... The price of gold today is about uh, $1,960. So if each XRP were worth one ounce of gold today, the market cap would be $196 trillion. You know, about, it's about 20 times the current mark, more than 20 times the current market cap for gold, mind you. Um, and, and so he, you could, his theory here, and he's talking about selecting a price for gold, central banks selecting a price for gold, which would also obliterate open markets for gold. That's what it would do. So just like I was saying earlier in the video, how if you're going to central banks enforce by legal mandate, like you break the law, if you, you don't do, if, if you try and you know buy or sell outside of you know, whatever the set price is, just like I was saying that for XRP, if, if the government did that, it, it obliterates free markets. You can't buy or sell for whatever price the free market would have. That's what he's proposing here for gold, right? That that That's what he's saying right there. Um, and, and so... So setting that aside, though, I mean, it actually gets much, much worse. And so I've already explained why central banks agreeing on the price of XRP is nonsense. And the same is true if you're talking about the price of XRP being controlled by uh, making it represent a controlled price of gold. But what if XRP is backed by gold and the price of gold isn't being controlled by governments around the world? So government uh, has an open market price is what I'm saying. Like, what if it's an open market price and then XRP, it's just uh, it's backed by gold? Would that be any better? You know, couldn't XRP being backed by gold to drive up the price? Could, like, couldn't that happen? Couldn't XRP being backed by gold actually drive up the price? Absolutely not. <laughs> you need to understand that an asset 
can only be one of two things. Okay, number one, an asset can be backed. Now, in the hypothetical scenario set by Jimmy in James Rule's uh, James Rule XRP's video, which is what I've been covering up to this point in my video, um, XRP would be backed by the dollar or, or presumably other fiat currencies for other jurisdictions, sure. Now, that means that a third party would match whatever it's backed by. In this case, presumably, that third party would be the United States government and every other, because you're talking about central banks here, so that'd be the United States government, other governments around the world, and... Um, and uh, all the other governments on the planet. So XRP would effectively be a coupon in this scenario, re representative of something else, or um, a representation of whatever it's actually backed by. But if XRP were backed by gold, then that means the price of XRP would be whatever the price of gold is. Now, uh, number two, an asset, uh, this is the second one, an asset, because again, the first one is an asset can be backed by something. Number two, an asset can be self-valued. Today, XRP is self-valued. So is Bitcoin, so is gold, open free markets. And so again, that's because these assets trade openly and freely in global markets, so speculators decide the price. These assets are not backed by anything. Now, it should be very obvious that an asset cannot be both backed and self-valued self at the same time. Consider this example. If XRP is backed by gold at today's price, $1,960, uh, and it's also self-valued at 83 cents, which again is the open market price at the time of recording this, then what is XRP actually worth? Is it worth $1,960 because that's what gold's worth and it's supposed to be worth what gold's worth, or is it worth 83 cents? It can't be worth both prices at the same time, so it's either backed or it's self-valued. XRP is self-valued. But what if XRP were suddenly backed by gold, as Jimmy is suggesting here? And remember, XRP is now worth what gold is worth. You know, that means in order for XRP to be worth more in the future, gold has to increase in price. Want the price of XRP to double or triple? Then the price of gold has to double or triple. The opportunity for incredible returns is way greater with crypto than gold. Would you really want XRP to be worth whatever gold is worth? I sure as hell don't. None of this makes any logical sense. <laughs> it really doesn't. And I'm, I haven't even yet gotten into it. I've just been tackling some of the, the things that have been stated by Jimmy here. Um, I started doing research on a video. I've mentioned this a few times. I th it may have been like back in May. Uh, I, I started researching like what it takes for, historically, what has it taken for assets including like bitcoin and just crypto in general to get bid up in terms of price how much money does it take to have these big jumps up in price and i came to the conclusion rather quickly although i didn't finish all of my research i came to the conclusion very quickly that there's nowhere near enough money on the entire damn planet to get xrp bid up to thirty-five thousand dollars. so xrp will never be worth thirty-five thousand um, dollars unless you're talking about um, you know, hyperinflation or something like that. But in today's dollars, with the buying power of the United States dollar today, no, it's not going to happen, folks. It just isn't. And I haven't even delved into that, which I'm not going to in this video. I didn't even finish my, my research for that video. But even just tackling this and the concepts here, um, I just, I, I think the ideas are wrong. And I think I've, I, I hope I've done an okay articulating why I believe that's the case. And again, it's nothing against any of them. Uh, thoughtful adults can respectfully disagree. And so that's all that I'm doing here. I'm respectfully disagreeing, nothing against any of these. I've, that's the reason I've said it like an infinity amount of times. It's because I'm a 38-year-old man. I understand that when people have their their ideas challenged, a, a lot of adults, uh, they still feel like it's a personal attack. And I swear in my life that is not what this is. I just think it's fun to talk about this stuff. So uh, if anybody wants to keep the conversation going down below, please let me know. Um, I'm going to stop recording this. I'm going to get it started uploading, and then I'm going to go ahead and record the XRP price calculator portion of this. And it is very interesting. Now, that video should be a lot shorter than this one, but definitely very, very interesting. So that's it for now. Am I right? Am I wrong? Hopefully this came across as I intended and not rude because I'm not trying to be rude at all. I get passionate, so hopefully it didn't come across in a way as, like differently than I intended because I got respect for everybody, you know, just be <laughs> crystal crystal clear. I know I've laid it on thick, but there's a reason for that. I, I really want to make sure that um, it's, it's taken to heart. But anyway, I'll go ahead and wrap up here. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.